I'm speaking to you today on the awakening. My scripture is Proverbs 14, 34. The Bible says that righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. In addition to everything else, God used the Jews as a blueprint, a laboratory experiment, taking them up from the nations of the earth. He dealt with them in sickness, in peace, and in war. In this age-long story, he declared to all nations in substance, this is what I shall do with any and every nation under these given circumstances. Consequently, the history of the Jews is more important than that of any other nation. The directions, the decrees, the declarations God directed to them are of immense interest, of vital importance. History as a whole is but an endless proof of God's pronouncements. These are verified in every generation. Ours is no exception. We see the hand of God writing on the walls of every land. It is ours to read and to heed and to be warned, to repent, to turn from our wicked ways, to get right with God. History teaches two major laws, the laws of periodics and the law of of progressions. We are told that these two laws govern all of the empires. First, the law of periodics. This is accepted by all recognized historians. It is in substance that every thousand years, more or less, a civilization falls or undergoes a change that is almost equivalent to a fall. A barbarian, semi-civilized, vigorous nation, almost always lower in the stage of culture and civilization, is used by the hand of God to bring to time even to punish the more refined people. Civilization enjoyed by us and called the Western civilization is about 1,000 years old. It began with the overflow of Constantinople by Mohammed II and his Seljuk Turks. The basilisk was killed in the carnage that followed the capture of the city. Greek scholars, Greek teachers, Greek learning, Greek culture were scattered across the then known Western world. We are now, and historians recognize it, as well as the Bible scholars, on the verge of upheaval. Unless God intervenes soon, it is inevitable what form the upheaval will take. Historians and the world do not know, but this is not so with us who know the Lord Jesus Christ. We know that it is time for us to look more steadily toward heaven, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. This is danger in capital letters. Now let us look at the law of progressions. In history, we notice that every nation with the exception of one, there has been four consecutive well-defined periods. The period of discovery and, and, and colonization. The period of expansion and cultivation, the 
period of leisure and destruction. The periods well nigh define themselves. They draw quite a clear picture. The picture of discovery and colonization is generally the most trying time in the growth of a nation. The work that the founders do is almost unbelieving work, toil, punishing for seven days a week, many a time to make the nation grow from sun up to sun down. This is how our land and country and nation were born under God and hard labor. How well are we keeping it? The period of expansion and cultivation. This period softens the rigors of the endless days and nights of labor. The population increases. Cities are built. Communication is established. And many other things are in the favor of the nation, the period of leisure and luxury. Leisure is always well, but when one lets leisure becomes luxury, then that is the danger period. Then there came last the period of deterioration and destruction. No nation has fallen from the outside Neither Egypt nor Assyria nor Italy fell, as history tells us, from the onslaughts of the enemies from the outside. It has always been the faults, the failures, the corruptions, and the rottenness of the inside that has cracked up the people. Right now, our own country is standing with one foot in the period of leisure and luxury while the other foot is balanced precariously over the frightening abyss of deterioration and destruction. There was one nation once saved from this seemingly inevitability. The nation was the British Empire. The thing that saved it was not its armies or navies, nor towers, nor statesmen, nor its wealth, not ability, nor merchant princes, but a revival under John Wesley. When John Wesley began his revival, it was like it is today. Infidelity was bidding for power. The doctrine the dollar was worth only about three cents to the common market. The nation was the laughing stock of the world. Is this not the way it is today in which we live? Wesley, Whitefield, and Edwards began to call the nation back to God. These men were burned out for God across arose from the ashes of themselves and went forth crying for men to turn to God. You ask what these great giants of that time preached. What was their burning message? What appeal did they use to arouse the hearts, the conscience, and the souls of the men of their time. They were saturated with the presence of God by prayer and the Spirit of God. They were firebrands for God. They never just had fire, but they had Holy Ghost fire. They preached the awfulness of sin, the mightiness of the Savior, and the nearness of salvation. They preached the awfulness of sin in its reach. They let it be known that there is no area of life into which sin 
has not sent its destroying tentacles. There is nothing sacred about Satan, my friends.